If you've ever considered writing a book or being the author of a travel book, this podcast is for you. It's something, to be honest, I've been curious about. And so I wanted to bring in an expert and pick her brain to be able to give you some insights and tips and also an amazing resource that she has if you want to pursue this path. But if you're new here, welcome. I'm Christine Lozada. This is a mini series of Everyday Badassery. I want to help you to be just 1% more badass as a travel creator, a creator, or a small business person. And today, (laughs) I'm a big fangirl. I am fangirling the heck out of Alexa West, who has over 20 books, uh, both traditional published and self-published. And I'm excited to bring her in today to share some of her insights and knowledge. But please check the show notes. There are more resources on what she has available, such as her course, and more in there for you. And on that note, let's bring her in. Hi, I'm Alexa West, and I am the founder and creator of the Solo Girls Travel Guide. It is the best-selling and award-winning travel guide book series for women. And surprise, surprise, a lot of people don't know, but it's all self-published, which I'm very oh, proud of. I'm so excited for today's podcast episode because you don't just have one book. And don't forget to check the show notes. How many books do you have out there? I lose track of our guidebooks. I think we're at 12 to 15 that are live now in and when we're now um, going to duplicate that because my business partner, she's Mexican, and we're going to make them all in Spanish, too. Oh, so so I'm very excited. And then I have some other books. So I think in total, about 20 books I've published. Okay. Well, that's 20 more than I have, <laughs> which I love. I'm so excited you're here today because a lot of people don't even know, like, where do I start? Like, <sighs> what do I do first? And for someone who's like, who knows, I know I want to write a book, but I don't know where to start. Where would you recommend they start first? That is the question I get all the time. I get this question, gosh, a few times a month for years. Where do you start? If you start on YouTube, which is how I started back in 2017, was just finding YouTube videos, you're going to get lost and confused and tangled because Mm. everyone has a different process and you need to find the process that works for you in writing a book and publishing a book. Um, but I would say start with asking yourself a few questions. And that is, who is your audience? And be as specific as you can. What is the, what are, what is the problem they are needing to solve? Mm. What is their main problem? They can have one big problem and a few little problems. And what is, how does your book promise to solve that problem? So Mm. this sounds, you know, very like for nonfiction books, this is like self-help and even a memoir, like how does your story solve that problem for someone? Um, But even when you go to novels, you know, there are characters that have very, you know, deep, complex, you know, issues and you can solve problems through characters as well. So I'd say, think about your audience. What are you delivering to them? Because we all have journals filled, you know, if we're wanting to write a book, we all have journals filled with great stories and great stories are great. But you got to think from the sales perspective too. What are you offering? That's why, really, why should someone buy your book? Yes, that's a really powerful way to think about it because it can guide how you approach it because there isn't uh-huh. one single way to go about it. I love that. So start with those questions. And the second thing that people always wonder about is, oh, but like, did it take you years and years to write your books? And how Mm -hmm. long should it take me to write? And I think there are lots of different processes that people can go through. But what's your take on for someone asking the question of like, how long should it take me to write my book? Mm -hmm. How would you respond? Okay, well, I mean, there's a there's a million ways for a lot of people, it takes them 10 years to finish a manuscript, and then the manuscript sits in their desk, and then they (laughs) never do anything with it. Like, that's the most average way that a book happens, right? It never sees the light of day. Don't be that person. Don't be that person. Don't be that person. So I have actually over the years come up with a an eight week boot camp that I put myself through and that I now I now offer to my students, but it it is about a 1000 words a day. And you want to hit like 40,000 to 50,000 as your like starting point. Um, That is, yeah, that's my, that's the system that I use. And I use that for, I use that for the one way ticket plan, which is like self-help memoir. And I use that for my guidebooks. So it all, it's all about the key is having a structure. It's almost like you're going to paint, you're going to, have a, one of those draw in the lines or like paint in the lines mm. pictures. So you have to make your structure. And once your structure is done, that takes you about a week or two 
of understanding my chapters, my goals, then you can just fill it in with consistency mm -hmm. and for eight weeks and in total 10 weeks. So it's a, I, I think that if people have a lot of, what is that word? Commitment, you can do it in 10 weeks. Hell yeah. And yeah. I've already shouted this out in the intro of this podcast. So don't forget to check the show. Blah, blah, blah. Don't forget to check the show notes. But Alexa, tell us, where can people find your bootcamp at? You can go to alexa-west.com and look for in the navigation, write your damn book. <laughs> and this course, I actually open and close my enrollment. So it's not always an open enrollment because I love to nurture my students mm -hmm. as they get in. I love to know where everyone is. So we do open, close enrollments. So when you go there, you'll either be able to join the course or you'll be able to join a waitlist for the course. Mm, that's really smart. Um, you gotta you gotta hold their hand through it, make sure they're successful. Yeah, I love that. I wanna, I wanna know everyone's ideas and like how, how we're moving together. Yeah. I like that. Um, all right. So when it comes to, okay, now we're like getting down this idea of like questions that we're going to ask ourselves, mm -hmm. this 10 week boot camp to get yeah. it all done. There are various ways that you can go down the path of getting your book out to the world. Mm -hmm. Um, and you have chosen self publishing. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. And I, I'm also traditionally published. So Ooh, both I've done both. What are some of the things that someone should be thinking about as they're considering these two different paths? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I have so much to talk on this. Okay. I'm going to try take, and keep it really. Take, take the course. <laughs> yeah. Take the course. I'm going to try and make it really brief. Number one, self-publishing. People will, I think there's like this misconception that you have to have a publisher, like a traditional publishing mm -hmm. house, like Random House to have a successful book series. But the Solo Girls Travel Guide is 100% self-published. And what is actually the reality is that if you're going to self-publish, you've got to know how the back end of Amazon's algorithm mm. works. And I know that sounds so not sexy, but it's really simple. And if you do it right one time, you're good to go. So I always say like self publishing, it's going to take more work from you upfront. Um, and even in marketing kind of long term, you're going to have to really marry that book. But the benefits that you reap are, you can edit that book anytime you have full mm. control. You never sell your rights to that book. That's your book. Mm. Um, and you can do deals and control the pricing. So I think there is so much power in self-publishing. And then on the other hand, traditional publishing, when I got my book deal, I was like, oh my gosh, this is great. This book is going to just do incredible on its own. But it's a little more complicated because now you have a, quite a few cooks in the kitchen. Mm. You have your publisher, you have your editor, you have the sales team, you have, and you think that's all great, but you have to have a team that you work well with. Mm. So, and, and they own your book and your royalties are smaller, but they are the machine that has the power to get your book in bookstores everywhere. Mm. So there is such a balance. And I, now that I am traditionally published and I have had so much success in self-publishing. I think that both are avenues that people should explore. It's going to be like, you know, what shoe fits on your writer's foot, you know? Yeah. I love this perspective. And for those who are listening today, you know, I love to keep it real. Like we're getting some really good advice. And obviously Lex has seen a lot of success in writing her books. I would love to hear one thing, like one tip that you have in writing that you definitely recommend and will continue to do or have done through your 20 books. And what's one thing that maybe um, is a mistake that mm. that you mm -hmm. would you hope that somebody doesn't walk into that same thing that you did. So let's start with the positive and then huh, we can, you choose if you want to go positive or negative first. I'm going negative. Yeah, let's do I, it. I, 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 have it. <laughs> I have it right away. I spent in, in the first few years of me self-publishing, I was under the impression that I needed a team. So like I hired someone to, you know, proofread or to do my formatting or my margins. And I ended up spending so much money and being so stressed. And then, you know, I spend money and then I have to wait five days for them to like turn around and deliver my manuscript back. And I eventually realized like, damn, I can save money and do this faster. So mm -hmm. I like to teach how to be that team for yourself and also how to turn your friends into that team. My friends are my proofreaders and mm. I love that. I love that a lot. Like what's one thing that you, you've done or would suggest others do like through all of your 20 books? Okay. I'm going to have one really boring one, which is if you're going to self-publish, you 
must have ads on your book. You mm. have to have Amazon ads on your book. And you don't have to have a huge budget, but Amazon ads are going to help you stand out above the com competition. Hmm. So that's a big one. I've actually never heard of that tip before amongst uh, all the people I've talked to about writing uh, a book. I love it. Well, if it's traditionally published, you don't have any control over the ads. But if you're self-published, mm. you do. And I love yeah. that. I like that's been one of my favorite things. And positive and fun is like just being like your marketing team for yourself. Like mm. I am, I take my books with me in my bags everywhere and like mm. take photos of them everywhere and like give them out when I can. And that's been really fun is like just learning that being an author means being like the parent to your book, which is mm. your child now. And it's been really fun. Oh, I love that. I mean, so all of this is in the show notes for you, but tell us again, where can people find you and where can people find your course? alexa-west.com, check the navigation bar and you'll find the course there. And also you can always find me at Solar Girls Travel Guide on Instagram. And I talk about my course there as well. Heck yeah. And actually one bonus question. What has been the most rewarding thing for you about after publishing all of these books? Every morning, it's part of my ritual to open my inbox on my Instagram and in my Gmail and read messages from readers. Mm. And I don't get back to all of them all the time. And I do try, but it's just like hearing stories of women that are like, I just got divorced mm. and I bought your book and now I booked a flight to Bali and I'm going to go heal myself. You know, it's things like that. There's just so much power in books in in sharing more than, you know, a quick 30 second reel on Instagram. There's power in books. Books absorb into your soul. And it's like you mesh with that author and it, the book becomes yours. It's just so magical. Mm -hmm. And I, watching that over the years and watching people grow from the words that I've written is shocking, but also just so fulfilling. It's the power of our story. Yes, yeah. I am so inspired. Thank you. Thank you for doing this with me. Thank you. She's such a badass when it comes to authoring travel books. Heck yeah. Check out Alexa in the show notes below. If you found value in this episode, please share it and connect with Alexa. Connect with me. I'm at Christine Lozada everywhere. I love one of the things I reflect on from this conversation is Alexa's really about adding value. Think about as you're considering writing a book, how can you add value to someone's life, solve a problem they have, understand who you are talking to and how you can relate to them? How powerful is it that the feedback that she gets from the world as a result of putting her message out there really is a lot of impact and you can have that impact too. So go forth, be badass, check those show notes, and we'll see you in the next one. Ciao.